Hello audience, Dave here, and we got some big news for you. We just hit 2,000 subscribers on YouTube, so I figured that I would come on here and say thanks for watching and thanks for continuing to watch our videos. So last time we covered ordinary annuities, and we saw that retirement saving plans or 401k funds, if you're from the US, can be converted to an annuity where you'll be receiving cash flows over a finite period of time. That is an annuity. And we also have an instrument that kind of looks like an annuity but isn't an annuity per se, and that is a bond. And that's because it pays interest or fixed amounts of interest over a finite period. Even though this kind of looks like a razor blade, I'm going to label it and say bond. That's a bond certificate. And the difference between an annuity and an annuity due, let me just quickly draw the timeline, is that instead of having cash flows at the end of each period, at the end of each month or year, they're going to be at the beginning. So that's the only difference. So I'm going to put a little asterisk and say end and then say beginning here. So one type of example of having to uh, pay out cash at the beginning would be if you have to lease something. So for instance, when I moved out of my parents' house and actually had to lease my first apartment, I had to pay roughly something like $1,000 uh, each month. So let's just say for simplicity's sake that we pay or we lease on a yearly basis. So I'm gonna be paying $10,000 a year because it's a bit simple, or a bit more simple if we uh, do this on a yearly basis rather than a monthly basis. And let's say the interest rate is 5%. So we're gonna have $10,000 each year for, uh, let's say, a 10 year period. Now, if we had to calculate the present value of this, how would we do this? If you were to look at both of these, they look very similar. So before you go ahead and start racing through your textbook looking for an annuities due formula, let's just look at both of them and think about how we would calculate it logically. So for an annuity, we would just find the present value by using the annuity formula that I brought up. Now the only difference between the annuity and the annuity due formula or the annuity due timeline is that there's this initial beginning cash flow. So what we can do is we can use the annuity formula to calculate the present value of these cash flows and then just add the beginning cash flow of $10,000 since that's already present valued since we paid it in the current day. So let's go ahead and actually calculate what this would be. So we're going to use the annuity formula. Like I said, present value is cash flows one minus one divided by one plus r to the power of t. You'll come to just memorize that, even though it's quite a large equation, you actually will eventually just memorize it. And we're gonna sub each of these in. So the cash flow would be $10,000 a year. And the rate, like I said, would be 5%. And we have 10 periods and that's what our formula will look like with the variables subbed in. So this is actually going to work out to be present value is equal to 10,000. And our annuity due factor, what this stuff on the right will equal, will be roughly 7.72. And that will give us 77,000. 217 if we use further decimals. So let's say that is our present value. So that will be our annuity due present value, but we also need to add in the $10,000 because we didn't include the beginning cash flow. So in the end, the present value of all those payments would be would be 87,200 
and 17. So you can see that they're very similar, but there's just one difference, and that's the beginning cash flow. And alternatively, uh, if you don't want to use the annuity uh, formula, you can always, like I said in some of our previous tutorials, you can just discount each individual cash flow. But that would take a very long time and it definitely takes much longer than using the annuity formula. So I definitely would advise using the annuity formula when you're on a test. And an instance of this where you would actually need the present value is maybe you're trying to uh, decide if we want to possibly lease an apartment or rent it or if we want to maybe uh, purchase a house. So if if the present value is uh, less, maybe we'll take on the leasing arrangement rather than actually owning it. But there are many variables that's taken into consideration when making that kind of decision, so I'm not gonna get too uh, involved in that. So I'm gonna end it there, and in the next one, we're gonna be talking about uh, APR versus EAR. I'll see you guys then.